Blaze Blue Entropy Effect is a new roguelike 2D action game by 91 Act. Look, it's a Chinese company, okay? They made a game with Blaze Blue characters that has nothing to do with the original fighting game except for the background environments. It's pretentious, obtuse, and there is only about as much world building as some cheap Sword Art Online PC game. It's about 20 bucks or so, and it's fine for that price. It's in early access right now, so it's obviously not finished. There are character placeholders and some coming soon messages, but mostly there is a full game here. At least 10 hours or so. Your time may vary. At the time of this review, my current playtime is 14 hours. It has a good suite of settings and the best setting ever. Turning double click a direction key to dash off. Story is about a bunch of cute robots. It really doesn't matter because you go into this mind training device and fight through three stages and a Metroidvania type end stage with two bosses. You pick a blaze blue character, I'm hoping they add more soon, and select an Evo type, which is a fancy word for character build. It's basically a saved character from your previous run. You can get an additional skill if you select one or two of them. This is a combat-centric game. It's competent with its general prowess, and things are satisfying to hit with a variety of moves, abilities, combos, and extensions to your moveset called Potential. The three stages are divided into several smaller arenas. Kill the enemies, then progress to a small room where you can choose to fight more, get a free boost, buy upgrades with currency that you earn from defeating things, or clear your entropy. You see, as you go through the game, you get this thing called entropy. Entropy is uh, thermodynamic quality representing the unavailability of a system's thermal energy for conversion into mechanical work, <sighs> often interpreted as the degree of disorder or randomness in the system. Uh, look, it's a negative status effect. If you do nothing, it will build up and you will get negative status effects like slower charging abilities, stronger enemies, less damage, etc. It's for players who want to challenge themselves. Since I don't want to scream at my screen any more than I have while playing this, I usually just select rest and get rid of it. Just keep it under 100 and you're fine. As you defeat things, you get tactic experience. This is where the build crafting comes in. There are lots of tactics that can be selected. You get to choose three at random and customize your build on the fly as you play through the game. You can have a build that is based around your strengthening recharging skill, has an elemental property, poisons enemies, shadow clones, you name it. There's some pretty cool stuff here. The synergies are great. There are many different tactics available. It's fun to build your character and it's also balanced pretty well. Graphics are nice and I didn't notice a lot of performance issues except for this one stutter right here. But for a game that came out of nowhere, it's pretty polished, and I am thankful for that. After you play some runs, make some Evo types, and earn some AP by playing the game, you can take one of your best Evo types or builds and use them in a boss fight called a Mind Challenge that will give you more AP currency and sometimes the item that unlocks other characters. Use the AP currency to unlock permanent upgrades to make your next run easier. This loop is very fun and addictive. Here are some issues you might want to watch out for if this type of action game interests you. Some of the animations are a bit too long and will get you in trouble. There are some cancelable moves, mostly jump canceling, but if you commit to something, no matter how quick the animation is, you may get clipped, for there are not many iframe attacks. Some characters are easier to control because they have slower, straightforward basic combos, and others are Noel Vermillion, who is spastic and all over the place. I really do like the crazy aerial ballet she can get into, but it can be hard to control. A lot of characters have moves that push them forward or backwards. Sometimes an enemy will trap you between lasers. You'll want to attack the enemy, but if you do, you'll probably move forward and get tagged by the laser anyway. This happens more than you think. You'll be saying, what the heck hit me? A lot. The neon, high-contrast art style with the flashy particle effects make for a confusing experience sometimes. It's easy to lose track of your character or get a bit overwhelmed by a boss's flashy attacks. Hit detection can use some work, mostly because you get hit by things that you thought were outside your hitbox. There are a lot of stage hazards, fire, etc. In almost every level, there are static, ranged enemies that just shoot you from afar. They telegraph their shots well and don't do that much damage, and you can take them out with your swift movement skills, but they are pretty annoying. There is some BS in this game. 
weird teleporting, enemies who guard other enemies or make shields for other groups of bad guys, these tanky charging samurais that don't always stagger, these ninjas in a small hallway. Yeah, they telegraph their attacks, but there's like 50 of them. There's this cliche little girl boss with powers who speaks very stoically, is probably a thousand years old and hits you with butterfly lasers like you're in some Toho themed nightclub. And then there's a later boss in this elevator that is an auto scroller with a teleporting boss, shooting projectiles that bounce off walls with randomly spawning stage hazards and a damaging electric floor. I really hate this one. But like most boss fights in the game, it is learnable. Overall, despite some flaws and a boring story, this game surprised me how fun and addicting it was to play and mess around with. I played most of this on the weekend, and it was a great diversion from my daily grind and an escape from the live service game world. If you like a good action roguelike, check this one out. Blaze Blue Entropy Effect gets a hesitant but positive 3.5 spastic floaty Noel for millions running into a random stage hazard out of 5. This is Dan T from Twisted Banana Productions, signing off and waiting until my giant sword-wielding waifu is available.